McFarlane, comedy mastermind. If you don't know who I am, just pretend I'm Donny Osmond. The guy behind Family Guy. That we know. Artist. I did a, a two-dimensional drawing of Ted. Voiceover artist. I don't really care. I, I enjoy them both. Writer, director, and now movie star. Ah! Ah! That went south so fast! His journey from small town boy to Hollywood powerhouse. He is kind of breaking the mold. He's a comedic genius. There's something inside you that keeps saying, no, go further, try something different. It's a constant crippling feeling of inadequacy. <laughs> Tonight. Is that what it is? <laughs> that might be what it is, yeah. CNN Spotlight, Seth MacFarlane. In 1998, his big break. Fox, home to the Simpsons, gets a look at an animated short Seth creates. Hi there, my name's Steve. I'm a dog, in, in case you're, um, well, stupid. Fox invites him to shoot a pilot, so long as he does it on the cheap. Now they weren't going to give me a million dollars to make a pilot, so they said, listen, if you can do this for 50 grand, we'll give you a shot at a primetime show. Seth titles his program Family Guy. Put out your thermostat. Man. It's a twisted take on the nuclear family, complete with matricidal talking baby. Stewie, I said no toys at the table. Damn you, vile woman! This is a grape or a cherry. You know what? I don't really care. I'll enjoy it either way. Seth voices several characters, from Stewie to Dad Peter Griffin. Right, alcohol is trouble. You know, I feel kind of guilty I ever gave Chris his first taste of beer. Yeah, but you turned out okay, didn't you, pal? I'm gonna go get wasted. Okay, look both ways. The voice itself came from a security guard where I went to college, and he had just this, just this impossibly thick, loud, boisterous Rhode Island accent. Fox greenlights the show, giving it an incredible launching pad. They put it behind the Super Bowl, which is, you know, that's the biggest piece of real estate on television. He's a family guy! The date, January 31st, 1999. The world gets its first look at Family Guy. Well, we're officially on welfare. Come on, kids, help me scatter car parts on the front lawn. The show wastes no time pushing the boundaries of taste. Whoa, is that really the blood of Christ? Yes. Man, that guy must have been wasted 24 hours a day, huh? The humor was just crazy. Yeah, America's great, isn't it? Except for the South. It was just a very new kind of show. Sometimes it made you cringe, but it was just that darn funny that you couldn't help but laugh at it. That's, at the end of the day, that's all it's trying to do. It's not, it's not trying to change the world. Yeah, boy. The debut of Family Guy makes him, at age 24, the youngest executive producer in network television. Seth MacFarlane is on his way. Its creator gets an invitation to speak at his alma mater in Rhode Island. The timing will have profound implications for Seth. The date? September 10th, 2001. The next morning, September 11th, he heads to Boston's Logan Airport to fly back to L.A. I got to the uh, counter and, and I said, yeah, I'm booked on flight 11. And and uh, the one behind the counter said, oh, you know, I'm sorry, you're too late. They just closed the gate. And I said, all right, well, you know, I'll take the 11 o'clock. Went into the lounge, uh, fell asleep, woke up about 45 minutes later to a, to a commotion. And the first plane had hit. Unconfirmed report that a plane has crashed into one of the towers there. We are Sat there and watched the second plane hit. Another passenger plane hitting the World Trade Center. And I turned to the guy next to me and... and uh, and said, my, my God, that, that was the flight I was supposed to be on. The close call does not prompt Seth, an avowed atheist, to re-examine his worldview. I'm not a fatalist. I, I, I was not shaken to the core. He keeps his focus on Family Guy. But there, trouble's brewing. Whoops. Ratings keep sliding as the show is bounced around the schedule by Fox executives. They did not know their audience. They didn't know what they had. When the network announces its 2002 lineup, the word is out. We've been canceled. Oh no, Peter, how could they do that? Fox tosses the show onto the ash heap of syndication. They basically gave it to Cartoon Network in exchange for promotional plugs for the DVD. 
That could be all she wrote for Family Guy and Seth MacFarlane. But then something remarkable happens. It starts airing on Cartoon Network and reruns, and it's doing really well. Is there no hope? And then the DVDs go on sale, and everybody wants it. That everybody who's a fan of the show wants it. Stupid remote's not doing anything. Fox execs begin to think. Oh boy. Hmm. Maybe we made a mistake. Then, to Fox's credit, they did something that never happens in television, which is bring a show back from the dead. Back by popular demand, Fox proudly announces the return of Family Guy with all new episodes. Those all new episodes begin airing in the spring of 2005. Hey Stewie, three o'clock, time for the view. No, 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 not again! <laughs> and Seth becomes an ever more powerful producer. Good morning, USA! Eventually creates a couple more shows, First American Dad, then The Cleveland Show. This is The Cleveland Show! American Dad, wildly successful. In 2008, Fox rewards him with a $100 million contract. Wow, you're in a good mood today. You bet I am. Reportedly making him TV's highest paid writer-producer. That's what, that's what my lawyers tell me. In his spare time, he records an album of big band music. Music is better than what? In 2012, he makes another bold move. I'm gonna name you Teddy. Directing his first feature. Ted, the story of a stuffed animal come to life and his lifelong pal. Seth voices the title character and helps animate Ted through motion capture technology. Well, I am a former celebrity in a minimum wage job. The film opens in June of 2012 and becomes an unexpected and gigantic hit. And let him in. Yeah, let him in. Exactly. Right? Good. Okay. All of the success with Ted. Were you kind of like, how did this happen? I had no idea what to expect from Ted. I love you. I love you too. You know, I wasn't thinking in terms of commercial viability, in terms of, of you know, what, what was going to sell. But sell it does. On top of that, Seth earns an Oscar nomination for co-writing a song in the film. Everybody needs a best friend. He'll be playing a much bigger role at these Academy Awards than just nominees. Good morning. Uh, I'm Seth MacFarlane, the host of the Oscars. I think it's pretty clear why the Academy wanted him, is that uh, this is the guy who created Family Guy. That's why they wanted him, they want those young eyeballs. I think it was a calculated risk that... Okay, all right, get ready. I'm about to shoot a full load at your cans. <laughs> Shut up. All right, okay. okay. Seth's current focus? Hey! Filmmaking. As the writer, producer, director, and star of A Million Ways to Die in the West. This is, this is a weed cookie, isn't it? What was it about the Old West that made you say, this is what I'm going to do with this backdrop? I have always been a fan of westerns, both in film and, and television, and it had been a while since anyone had really done a western comedy. The setting may be the Old West, but the script is full of Seth's contemporary humor. The American West is a disgusting, awful, dirty, dangerous place. Look around you. Everything out here that's not you wants to kill you. Outlaws, angry drunk people, scorned hookers, hungry animals, diseases. You, you can get killed just going to the bathroom. Seth's creative thrill-seeking has a track record of paying off. So much so, he can get Hollywood to greenlight a seemingly unsexy science project. The cosmos is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. The 1980 PBS science series Cosmos is back with a reboot, courtesy of Seth. See that glowing fog out there? It's radiation left over from the Big Bang. You are a big proponent of science and furthering science education. Why so? Why, is you, why are you so passionate about that? We all benefit from it, and yet there's a lot of fear. You take the, the insane anti-vaccination trend. It's, a, it's the prime example right now of why Cosmos is necessary. There is no more reliable, more self-policing mechanism than, than science. Science. Science is going to tell science when science is wrong. He knows about bringing shows back from the dead. Television's better 
uh, for having that show on. Beyond his TV project, Seth has Ted 2 in the works. Bring it in, you bastard. Come on. I love you. Sorry, that's the, oh. the, the, the thing. The old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Right. And more music coming with a new album of holiday classics. Just forget about words and sing or a song. There's something inside you that keeps saying, no, go further. Try something different. It's, it's, a, it's a constant crippling feeling of inadequacy. <laughs> is that what it <laughs> I is? Think that might be what it is, yeah. <laughs> Whatever his motivation, any project Seth takes on, his fans follow. He's doing the kind of comedy that very few people are doing and that there is an audience for and there is a devoted audience for. Devoted fans and family. We spoke to your dad at the premiere last night and here's what he said. I just have such great respect for him and he's still a very very grounded and kind and focused human being. He's a good soul, a good person and that's more than anything else what I'm proud of. My dad's such a <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get him for that man. Oh man I'm gonna get you guys son of a <laughs> I didn't expect that! <laughs> With Seth MacFarlane, always expect the unexpected.